will sit. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to our third Sunday in October, also the third Sunday of Pastor Appreciation Month. On that note, Pastor, could you please step down in front? Right in wow. the middle there. I take a week away and you're kicking me out. Absolutely. <laughs> For those of you who haven't, right in the middle, thank you, who haven't met Pastor, this is Pastor Chris Helt. He just finished this past week his final week of training to become a licensed pastor for Methodist Church. So let's give Pastor a round. And as Pastor Appreciation Month, this week, in honor of Pastor's finishing training, Judy and Linda, could you please come forward? Pastor, this is just a small token of our appreciation for all that you've done here at Trinity and our congratulations to you. Oh, absolutely. I forgot to cut the bubble wrap on one of them. Absolutely. Absolutely. That was a bread plate that... Yeah, I forgot to cut the tape on that, sorry. The one thing pastor... <laughs> the one thing he never had, and as a new pastor, he will have his very own chalice and patine. The chalice has a cluster of grapes, the bread plate has shafts of wheat representing the wine and bread. <laughs> Stay there. You can put that on the altar if you'd like, even with the bubble wrap. The other thing, as a thank you to Pastor, the, the congregation has decided that we are going to gift him a very special gift. Don and Wanda, please come forward. This is something that all new pastors usually get. So, Pastor, your very first cheater robe. Wow. And yes, we expect you to put it on. Yeah. <laughs> and down in the Sunday school room, there is a protective cover for it. I just couldn't get the hanger because it's back ordered till well into December. This is, this is why I keep saying no when, when uh, Reverend Boyu tells me I need to become a minister. No, I like my jackets. <laughs> you could leave that on for right now if you wanted to. It'll hide. It's just a puzzle. Exactly. Just do this with this. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Pastor Chris Helt. Yes, 
Yes, now you can come up and do the opening prayer. <laughs> I have your permission. Well, thank you. <laughs> um, I, I, I really, really do appreciate this. And um, I, I can see Don's face right now. He's going, that's it. <laughs> um, it is an honor. And it has been a, an honor to, to serve this church for, I don't know, a year and three months or a little more now, however long it's been. Um, and you're supporting me through through the times of not having all those credentials because we just weren't there yet, but God's saying, this is where you're supposed to go. <laughs> and this church has been incredibly supportive through all of that, and I thank you. Um, this last week was a, was a big week. Um, I'm going to go into a little bit more of that in the service. I don't want to take too much, but it's been about a, a three-year process. I mean, start to end when you start thinking, okay, God, I think you're calling me. It's time to do this. It's been about three years to get to this point, so it is a big moment, and it's not an ending point by any means. Um, there's still other things to be done, but it's definitely a, a milestone occasion in this. So, so thank you. And a couple of <laughs> wonderful things to, um, to remember this moment with that will uh, carry on in hopefully many years of ministry to come. So let's open a word of prayer. Gracious God, I thank you for these people, for this church, and for your spirit that lives among them. So many times we just don't know where we're going in this life. I look, often look and say, I don't know where I'm going in this life. But there's been a peace in there that, that you are the one leading. I ask that you would continue to, to lead me and my family on this journey, and also continue to lead this congregation. I've said from the beginning, I don't believe that you are done with us yet. I firmly believe that, and I ask that you would continue to pour yourself into us, that we could be your hands and feet in this broken world. Bless this time of worship. Bless each one of us as we seek to learn more about you. In your name we pray. Amen. And I invite you to stand and join in our call to worship and opening hymn. Power and might and majesty belong to God who created and is creating. Thanks be to God for God's mighty wonders. Like the image of the powerful wind and heavens as a garment, God's majesty is revealed in all creation. We look around as at the wonders and marvel at the infinite variety and beauty which God has created. Who are we that God should pay attention to us? We are God's beloved children, the stewards whom God has selected to care for God's word. Amen. And now we will sing for the beauty of the earth.
Please be seated. Our psalm today is Psalm number 104, verses 1 through 9 and 24 and 35. Please join me as we read this together. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty and cover yourself with light as with a garment. You have stretched out the heavens like a tent and have laid the beams of your chambers on the waters. You make the clouds your chariot and ride on the wings of the wind. You make the winds your messengers, fire and flame your ministers. You set the earth on its foundations so that it should never be shaken. You covered it with the deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. At your rebuke they fled. At the sound of your thunder they took flight. They rose up to the mountains, ran down to the valleys, to the place which you appointed for them. You set a bound which they should not pass, so that they might not again cover the earth. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Praise the Lord. And now we will sing. Oh no, we won't sing. I'm sorry. <laughs> and now our first scripture reading is from the book of Job, chapter 38, verses 1 through 7 and 34 to 41. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you, and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk, and who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy? Can you lift your voice to the clouds so that a flood of waters may cover you? Can you send forth lightnings so that they may go and say to you, here we are? Who has put wisdom in the inward parts or given understanding to the mind? Who has the wisdom to number the clouds? Or who can tilt the water skins of the heavens when the dust runs into a mass and the clouds cling together? Can you hunt the prey for the lion or satisfy the appetite of the young lions when they crouch in their dens or lie in wait in their covert? Who provides for the raven its prey when its young ones cry to God? and wander about for lack of food. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And now we will sing, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee.
Please be seated. And as we prepare to thank God for the offerings, I remind you we have our offering plates by the, the doors um, and an entryway over that way. We have our online giving, zalls, giving options. Oh, you guys got me all choked up this morning. I'll tell you what. <laughs> um, but we have our online giving options as well. We're still not passing a plate um, and, until we maybe get through this pandemic a little bit more, but we do have available options for you. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for all that you give us. We are truly blessed, and even in our times of need, you have ways of providing which we can't explain. We ask that as we give back a portion to you this morning, that you would take these gifts, multiply them, and use them. Allow us to be your hands and feet. Allow this church to spread your great news of joy and hope, salvation and forgiveness available through Jesus Christ. All this we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Young Disciples time, and I was asked very quickly this morning if I would be willing to speak a little bit. Many of you know that third Sunday in October usually is Laity Sunday, and I'm not going to ask the kids, because I promised I wouldn't do that to them, so I'm going to ask the, the older kids of the group here, who knows what laity actually means? Laity is not just me standing up here. Yes, I am the lay person, and it is considered laity. But everybody here in this building and around the world that does the work of God in the church and outside the church is considered laity. So you are all laity. When you go out in public and you share your stories with God or of God and how he's worked in your life, you are doing God's work. That makes you not only laity, but it makes you ministers as well. So from now on, when you hear the word laity, know that you are a part of the laity of the church and the family of God. Okay? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, for the children here, for the children of Trinity, and for the children around the world, as well as those who are children in heart, we ask that you continue to bless them Continue to hold them deep in your heart, comfort them, guide them, and let them know that every day they share your story, they share you and your light. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we will now sing, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. If you're able to, please stand as we sing.
The scripture reading is from Hebrews chapter 5, verses 1 through 10. Please follow along. Every high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is subject to weakness. And because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own sins as well as for those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor, but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also, Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. And he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us continue in a time of prayer. Most gracious God, we do thank you on this Laity Sunday. As Roberta said earlier, we are all called to be ministers in your name. We all have different gifts and different graces, different areas that we can serve the kingdom. That is just how you intended it. We were never meant to be people who weren't active in our faith. And I thank you for this group of laity. I thank you for the, the work that they do, the ways in which they make your name known in our community. I pray that you would continue to work within each of them, continue to inspire, continue to guide. It is through the work of these people that your church, that your church is created. The church is not a building. The church is the people within it. And I thank you as we have completed a, a long process in my life, and I take that step from laity into the role of clergy. I pray that you would bless those steps. Guide me. Teach me where I need to improve. Teach me how to lead. You are not done with this church, Lord, and I firmly believe that. And I know that those sitting in these pews firmly believe that. And I pray that you would make us one for your mission, your mission of making disciples in the name of Jesus. We lift up before you those that we know this morning who are hurting, who need your healing touch in their lives, those who are struggling with pain, illness, addiction, depression. Father, scoop them up in your hands and bring them comfort and peace. We lift before you the names of those we know this morning. We lift all of these to you. And we know that you know 
everything within our hearts, and those that were unspoken, that you hear those requests also. And Father, we come before you today to lift up joyous occasions as well. We lift up the celebrations in our lives, celebrating this beautiful world, the sunshine, and the things that we sometimes look past. We thank you as we reflect on those. And most of all, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you that through the struggles and trials of this world, that you came, became human, lived the life that we couldn't, and died the death that we deserve so that we could be brought into eternity with you our risen Lord and Savior. All of this we ask in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. gospel reading today comes from the book of Mark, chapter 10, verses 35 to 45. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized, whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they became angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them and their great ones are tyrants over them but it is not so among you but whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all for the son of man came not to be served but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many the word of god for the people of god Well, what a week it has been. I did have the privilege this last week, as you've heard, of, of spending the week away at one of the most beautiful locations in the world. And this was a step, of moving, being it's Laity Sunday, moving from Laity. I have been officially in the church, um, church world a lay servant until we completed these steps to allow me to become clergy. That's where we've had some of the issues with communion and things where we've had to have other elders and other churches assist us with those things because I didn't have that clergy status. Well, this week, we officially completed everything we needed to to receive that clergy status. So now we're just waiting for the official appointment uh, to come through, and we're, we're there. So I do thank you for your support through all of this. Now, I've been to Lake Huron Retreat Center a few times but never for more than a single day session. 
And be, being able to spend the week there was incredible. You, you're going to wonder what in the world did you learn there, because I'm going to share with you a little bit. But one of the most amazing things was to watch the sunrise over the lake each morning. We had absolutely beautiful weather last week. And each morning we could just go sit by Lake Huron and just be in awe. And I, I took, took some pictures. I got a couple I'm going to share with you. I didn't tell Melissa about this, but they're, they're in line there. So we have, uh, I'm going to look at this TV, I think. No. I'm trying to look at the glare. So this one, <laughs> this was about 7 in the morning or so, you know, before the sun had, had peaked over the lake, and it was, it was dark. The camera actually brought it out brighter than what it really was. It was pretty dark. And as I was sitting down by the lake that morning, I believe this was the last morning there, I decided to read the beginning of Genesis. It just was in my mind, God creating the light. And I, I sat there and I read, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty, and darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And the lake was so calm that day. It was about as calm as you'll ever see Lake Huron. And you could just see, just feel the Spirit of God. And then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. So that's the first picture. We can flip to the next one, which was the sun kind of coming out over the, it was in behind the trees there. And then the, the next one is, has to be my favorite, because after I read that passage from Genesis, there was a, a plane that flew over earlier, and there was that contrail. And I'm sitting there after reading the Spirit of God hovering over the waters, and I don't know if you can see it, All I could see was the Spirit of God hovering over the water, so I was like, i got to get a picture of that one. And then the final picture was our graduating class, 2021 Michigan Licensing School, and there's a, whole, there's a longer term that I, I, without looking at it, I can't tell you what all it is. But there were 14 of us that, that came through this, uh, this session, and, and there were some very peaceful moments, and then there were a lot of things we learned in the training throughout this week. We went from about 7.30 in the morning to 8.30 in the evening. So it definitely was a long, long, grueling week. But it is a, a, an awesome opportunity to have come through that. I wasn't sure what to expect. You can go ahead and flip off that now, too. We don't need to look at, <laughs> look at my face the whole time. Um, I will admit, though, I didn't know what to expect. When we turned in this application many, many months ago, and going through these last probably six months with these friends and colleagues, we didn't know what to expect going into this week. But we were put at ease pretty early on when our instructors assured us that they didn't view us simply as students, but as equals in God's call to ministry. Their purpose was to make us better pastors, and they did so by leading by example. These these clergy folk who had, some had 30 years of experience, some had 15, they shared with us their stories in their early years of ministry. What worked in their ministries that we could try? And they also shared what went wrong. They had quite a few. We did this, it didn't work, don't do it type of stories. How could they have handled certain situations better? And you know, when I read today's gospel lesson, I see good and bad examples of Christian leadership. So let's break down this, this story just a little bit. It starts with James and John, the sons of Zebedee. And they decide that they want to raise their status within the group. They want to make sure everybody knows that we're the ones closest to Jesus. Some of you saw on, on Facebook last night, Rochelle had posted some pictures, and, and not the one with Emily with the panel, that, that was cute. But they went to a, a house in the area, maybe some of you are familiar with. I think she ran into to Danny over there, she said. So you know, you, you know what we're talking about. <laughs> You're okay. <laughs> but it, there was a, like a, a, a castle-like house, and you got to go through, and you got to toast the king, and it was kind of this medieval, this medieval kind of a, a feel. And that's kind of what I picture here when James and John are talking to Jesus. They're picturing Jesus being this 
this high royalty figure and they're going to be the ones who are closest to him and they will get that same amount of respect that we're going to toast to the king. They're basically telling Jesus that when you're done with all this, make sure that we're there with you. Now, James and John were known to be bold. In Mark 3.17, Mark 3, even says that Jesus nicknamed them the sons of thunder. I don't get the impression they got that nickname because they were shy. And Matthew's account of the incident even says that their mom was involved in the discussion. It sounds kind of like the mom on the sidelines of that soccer field. You know, my kid needs to play more than the other ones. And then, of course, the other parents and other children are all getting upset that why do they get to play more? There was obviously a rift forming as they were all vying for who, who was going to be important. Well, Jesus uses this as an opportunity to teach them what it means to follow him. The world around them, the Gentiles, as they were known, had rulers, and they made sure that they knew exactly who was underneath each of them. But it wasn't just the Gentiles. Matthew 23, 1 through 7, Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, The teachers of religious law and the Pharisees are the official interpreters of the law of Moses. So practice and obey whatever they tell you, but don't follow their example, for they don't practice what they teach. They crush people with unbearable religious demands and never lift a finger of ease to ease the burden. Everything they do is for show. On their arms, they wear extra-wide prayer boxes with scripture verses inside, and they wear robes with extra-long tassels, and they love to sit at the head table at banquets and in the seats of honor and in the synagogues. They love to receive respectful greetings as they walk in the marketplaces and to be called rabbi. This is what the disciples were arguing over. They wanted a status upgrade. But this was not the example that Jesus had set for them. In fact, he was the opposite. Jesus lowered himself to glorify God. Going back to today's gospel, starting at verse 30, 43, and this time from the New Living Translation. But among you it will be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first among you must be the slave of everyone else. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus tells them that they must become servants and slaves of all, just as Jesus had demonstrated. Now the word servant and slave can have many different understandings. So let's look at the Greek roots for just a minute. The word translated into servant is diakonos. The English word that we get often from diakonos is deacon. In the United Methodist Church, we have three forms of clergy. We have elders, deacons, and licensed local pastors. A deacon specializes in working for the kingdom in some way. This week, the camp that we stayed at is run by Reverend Ann Emerson, a deacon in our conference. And she does a wonderful job keeping that place going, let me tell you. And you will see her doing anything that needs to be done. Serving food, washing dishes. She was always there at the, I know it's going to sound like I was really struggling this week, the omelet bar in the morning. She was there making omelets. It, it, was, it was really a week of sacrifice. <laughs> but she doesn't always take glorious tasks. She does what needs to be done to fulfill the mission in that camp setting. Pastor John MacArthur describes a diakonos as a person who did menial labor, such as house cleaning or serving tables. It was not necessarily a term of dishonor, but it simply described the lowest level of hired help. And then Jesus takes us to yet another level. He uses the word slave. Doulos is the Greek word for slave. A diakonos had a say in what they did, but not a doulos. They were owned by their master, and they did what they were told to do. 
Jesus lived the life of a servant, serving the lowly and oppressed, and he did so at the will of God the Father. Jesus did not lord over his disciples, but he lived the life that he was called to and now calls each of us to as well. There's a quote that's quite often attributed to St. Francis of Assisi. Preach the gospel at all times, and if necessary, use words. Now I've learned in some of my studies that there really is no evidence that St. Francis actually ever said this, but I still like it. Preach the gospel always, and if necessary, use words. Live the lives that we preach. I witnessed this over the last week. We were led by a group of pastors who have done great things, and they could have held that over us, saying, you will never be at this level. But they chose instead to remain humble and to teach through their examples, to further the kingdom through each one of the 14 graduates of this school. Let us also humble ourselves, following Jesus' example as we serve in his name. While we cannot confirm that St. Francis of Assisi said that earlier quote, there is a prayer that he often prayed that I want us to close with today. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be counseled as to counsel, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. I invite you to stand if you are able and join us in our closing hymn, Are Ye Able?
Please be seated. We have a few announcements to share with you. Okay. We have a staff parish meeting uh, following service today. Um, I believe we are all here. I think I've seen. And thank you for being here. We have to complete a few things before our upcoming church conference, which we'll talk about here in just a minute. But we have a deadline heading up, so I greatly appreciate you adding this meeting so we can get this done. Uh, this Tuesday, we have our food pantry evening hours, so if you or anyone you know is in need of assistance there, from 6 to 7, they will be open and happy to serve. Um, this Wednesday is also the community supper at the First Lutheran Church. Looks like chicken pot pie. There is apparently a pastor's appreciation lunch next week that I'm not supposed to know about still, but I'll announce it for all of you to know, and I will be extremely surprised. I, I, I do, in all seriousness, I, I thank you for, for all that has been done. I, there is, I know of many clergy colleagues who do not feel appreciated in their, their context, and it, it can be a difficult road sometimes, and I have never had that experience with this church. Um, we have been very well supported as a family, so thank you very much. We have five Sundays in October, um, so our fifth Sunday loose change offering will go to Heifer International again. We're going to try and get a little bit more in there before we send off a gift to them before the end of the year, kind of adding to our, our monthly mission focus we had in, um, I believe it was August, where we focused on Heifer International. So bring your change. On, actually, it'll be Halloween that day. Holy Hallways is coming up also. Holy Hallways, for those of you who maybe don't know, is we open up the, the church building at the bottom floor there and have uh, kids come through and trick-or-treat, and we're dressed as biblical characters um, it's a, n a nice opportunity to invite them into our, our church and, and be a welcoming church in their lives. I see a... You do not have to be in costume. Come. And we usually, from last year, we had quite a few people come through because they do the bonfire right across the the way there so it's usually a pretty good turnout so if you want to see some really cute costumes I don't know maybe Emily will wear her panda bear again and waddle through the hall <laughs> Diver Dave is not a biblical character <laughs> um, so we also have our annual Christmas bazaar coming up November 6th and I have a list that Carol Ann gave me um, where they still need some help volunteers to set up and tear down and workers I believe setup was going to be the Friday before um, following the food pantry hours, so coordinate with, with uh, her on what you are available to do, and she'll put you to work, certainly. <laughs> um, and then Saturday, we're going to do some teardown Saturday. We may not get it all done. kind of depends on how many hands we have. So the more hands, obviously, the faster we can get it done. So um, They also were looking for baked goods and desserts, looking for jewelry and Christmas items, and... Take a sign. We have some signs downstairs to put in your yard to advertise we have the bazaar. So um, we'd be happy to get you one of those signs. Um, they're down in that little closet area down in the, in the, by the office. Um, or if you don't know where that's at or need some help, let any one of us know. We'd be happy to grab one for you. And Carol said that she will have some sign-ups downstairs. So for our coffee hour, head down there and see her. Another sign-up we have which is here and we have uh, the photo directory. We're going to try and see if we can get a new photo directory, which is a, a great opportunity. It, it's not a, it, uh, a cost for the church. Um, they have some, some, uh, some programs and things that we can you know, get this uh, updated. It's been uh, about six years, I think, since we had one done, it looked like. And we looked at doing one in the spring, and we just couldn't pull it together. It's still coming out of a lot of the COVID restrictions, and we just weren't exactly sure it was going to come together. They're only in the area about two times a year. They're going to be in our area um, Monday, November 15th. So we'd like to see if we can get enough sign up to, to justify doing it or if we need to look at doing one in the spring. Um, but let's see what we can do to, to get, this, um, get this updated. And they're doing more digital things now too. We'll actually, I believe, have a church app. So the photo directory would be available at all the time. So for those moments where you're like, okay, who is that? <laughs> you have it with you. And uh, I, believe, I believe Karen was always saying she likes to do them in the fall more because, you know, you have that summer tan you're still working through. The spring, sometimes those photos, 
It looked like you've been inside all winter, you know. <laughs> so we will have this downstairs as well. So I encourage you to pick a time, um, sign up in there, and let's see what we can do to, to make that happen. And I think there's a couple other things coming up with Hanging of the Greens and Live Nativity. We'll get you more information on those as we get closer. We don't need to keep going through those, but look for more information on that. Yep, that, that would be a wonderful way to help if, if we, we can help. Yeah. <laughs> so the, if that's an area you, you feel you can help with, um, our church has, has volunteered to serve hot chocolate, and we'll need a few volunteers for that. We're working through that, but we definitely, hopefully, would have enough volunteers for hot chocolate and to do something else so we can rotate through. And So if, if that's something you're interested in, let us know. We'll, we'll get you in contact with, with Sarah and um, get that rolling. So. I believe that's all the announcements we have. And it's time for coffee. So, so let me offer the, the benediction. Preach the gospel at all times. And if necessary, use words. Go forward as lay members, but still equal members in Christ's mission to make his name known. Be the word for the people of our community and our world. Amen. God bless. Have a wonderful week. I hope to see you downstairs. <laughs>